Hey folks, it's Tom and Frugal Prepper. So, uh, I've got the cover torn off with this uh, guy. Kind of thinks there's the cover back there, but um, so on this paramotor, uh, the misfire was the coil. I'll show it to you here in a minute. It was this one. So I got these new replacement ones and put them in, and you have to file back right here just a little bit for these new ones in order for yeah, this to to gap right because there's a little raised spot here on the coil that will hit that otherwise um, but the the new ones also hook up front for the kill switch comes with new wires for the kill switch so I'll just show you it shows you in the instructions what you have to do here yeah take that tab file that off otherwise it'll hit when you're trying to adjust the gap on this side it won't uh, it won't adjust right and so then you hook up which shows the new kill switch wires how those go uh, that shows you the pins that you're going to file right there but that's all in there and so we look at the old coil and there was our problem so something hit that and uh, bent it. So something got lodged there, probably a bolt. It's got dropped inside that cover or something. Got lodged there. It came along and hit that, tore that all up. That's what it's supposed to look like. That's the other coil. Now the coil packs for these only come in parts. And there's the part number. OK63030SRV. Okay, is the part number for the kit it comes with new uh, bolts uh, that are actually just a hair longer so I put those in but uh, I noticed that they're a hair longer and this seems to be a hair thicker um, this part right here so probably just help it get a little more pickup a little more spark or whatever so anyway we're getting these updated magnetos put in uh, they're all gapped um, I gapped them to ten thousandths. It should be eight to twelve thousandths. Um, and of course, I sanded this was pretty rusty. I sanded this down to where it's nice and smooth before I gapped it, and uh, we should be good to go. So now I just gotta put all this back together. Doing this while my laptop's charging up so that I can diagnose an overheating issue. The fans on that. Needing my MDI two for some bidirectional controls. And my laptop battery was completely dead, so uh, I figure I'll work on this while I'm waiting to do that. All right, I'm looking at this uh, Buick here. It's uh, sitting wet in park with the air conditioning running. It overheated. Um, it came up on the display, said it was overheating. Trying to see if there's something going on with the fans. Um, so. If I just come back here and I exit, I got my tech to went up. I'll go to my low speed fans. And go ahead and kick on the low speed fan here. And they both run, so they're running in series. So that's good. They're both running, they both sound fine. And now I kick into the kick that back off. Now we'll go to the high speed. Maybe exit. Okay, high speed. And then I'll kick these high speed on. It'll kick the fan relay one on low speed. Then it's gonna kick the high speed relay two and three on. And they're running. They're blowing plenty of air. They're working. I wiggled the connector. The connector it seems fine. So I guess we gotta figure out what's causing it to run too hot. Make sure there's no like, restrictions in, in here anywhere. I don't see any here. <coughs> the coolant tank's good. Let's check the the coolant in the radiator. Okay. 
Well, that's going to take me a minute. Hang on. I thought we probably had a fan problem on this, but... It's got an aftermarket radiator in it. Because I put it in here a while ago. That rope is a little tight, man. Looks like it's low on fuel. There's a little... That's just a little puddle on this side piece. But it was actually low on fuel. Even though we're not low over here. Hmm. Let's see here. We'll go ahead and take this back off if we can. Yeah, I got antifreeze all over my fingers. Come on, mouse. <laughs> okay. That way we don't run the battery down. Let's see how much pulling it needs. Now I just try to figure out why it's not pulling out of the tank. I just did an intake gasket on this a while ago. Let's see how much she asked for. Not really that much. Maybe an eighth of a gallon. I mean, it could probably hold a little tiny bit more. Not enough to cause overheating issues, that's for sure. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to start it up. And we'll see what's going on. Looks like it's going to need plug wire soon. Oh, no, that's just a sticker. All right, I'm gonna start it up and let it run. and see uh, we can we can go ahead and monitor the temperatures on this while it's running. Right now, I do not have the AC on. I'm just letting the engine run by itself. I'm thinking this temp sensor might be off by about 10 degrees, just by <clears throat> the fact that when I first uh, when I was in fan controls, it told me my intake air temp was 33, but yet yeah, this was at 44. I think that might be our problem. I think we might have a bad temp sensor. So I'm going to see when the thermostat actually opens on this thing. See if it opens about 10 degrees too late. What I'm doing is I'm just going to keep feeling this bottom hose. thermostats open good. The map sensor is starting to come back down. Go around where it's closer to where it should be. It might just have been an open loop still. So I guess it will see when this thermostat opens. So you either have a thermostat that's lazy or we could have a bad uh, air temp sensor or a bad uh, electronic coolant temp sensor because at idle they were about 10 degrees or before we started they were about 10 degrees off from each other at 190 this engine doesn't feel quite 190 ish yet it's getting there though yeah, thermostat's open. The bottom hose got hot on me. 201, yeah, we're about we're about the same. We'll just see where the uh, 
temperature gauge is right now, 200, 201. Temperature gauge is about about halfway. We'll be taking on some fans here soon. about where it should be. It, it might be a little low. It should probably be more in that 45 to 50 range. Probably more in that 250 to 275 range. I'm going to go ahead and give her a little shot of what I got left in here. Well, it's just coming up really high on that low side. definitely not getting this thing to overheat just sitting here so I guess I'm gonna take it for a drive and see if it'll overheat on me everything I'm seeing looks like it's working fine uh, I'm surprised that it's kicking those high-speed fans on as often as it is but I think that it didn't start doing that until the AC so that's part of the AC high pressure switch um, which I guess we probably might be able to check that and to see if there's anything going on there but it's kicking it on to high speed fans, which is making it run cooler. Which makes no sense, really. Right now, now it's reading 190. Reading 187. So, definitely is not overheating. So, here I've got uh, engine cool on temp sensor 190, intake air temp 127. Band relay 2 and 3 is on. AC relay command. High side pressure T25. So I'm reading around T25. T29 now. T27. So the high side pressure looks good. when I started it a little bit ago. It's about where it was then. The other thing I noticed is this was about filled up to here before. It was like down at empty. I filled it up again. After running it, we had a low radiator, which I topped off, and then I ran it. Wondering if that line for that overflow tank wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, flowing for some reason and maybe messing with that cap allowed it to flow not sure well i'm going to take it for a ride and see what happens all right folks it's it's actually the next day so i did get the um paramotor running great i'll put some footage of it here i took on my phone real quick of it running
but it's going to be out of here soon. Um, so I still had a little misfiring, uh, but I was getting spark every time. But I still had some misfire, some weird idle. And it was these plugs, these Bosch or NGK plugs. Um, I, I couldn't find that exact plug. I cross-referenced it to a Champion RJC 12YC or RJ 12YC, um, which I had one of, and I had to go buy another one. But uh, it's got two new plugs in it, um, and then it ran great. Um, so probably that plug on that side was just fouled out pretty good from not running all the time. Um, but it runs runs good now. Uh, the Buick overheating problem I just did, couldn't reproduce. I took it on a nice long drive, highway, through the city, uh, stopping at lights, stopping along the way. It never got over 195 with the AC on, so I think we probably had an issue with that coolant being low. It wasn't coming out of the overflow tank like it was supposed to. He had never checked it um, or added any to it, at least, uh, because he was just probably looking at the overflow tank. He hadn't added any to it um, since I did the upper intake. So normally I'd expect, after you drive it a while, that it would get an air pocket and need some. So he just, it, it did, um, after I topped off the radiator, put the cap back on, ran it, it did suck a bunch out of the overflow tank. So I had a full gallon and I put uh, a little a little more than half of a gallon probably getting close to three quarters of a gallon in it um, and I'm gonna let him drive it and now that it's sucking it out of the overflow tank like it's supposed to which I was probably just the cap being on too tight or something it is an aftermarket radiator um, but we'll see what happens um, so this guy's uh, this is the Yukon. This is the owner of the paramotor. I'm doing an oil change for him while he's at church. And he's got to come back here. And then I got to move. Let me turn this around. I have to move the Porsche, which I've left it sitting here for a week now while we're waiting on that used fan to come. Um, should be here before too long, hopefully. But with the fan unplugged, uh, the battery has not drained at all. So that's good. And then here's his trailer that he'll have to get hooked up to that Yukon. So I gotta figure out where I'm gonna play musical cars with the Porsche or whatever at um, so that he can back up here and hook up his trailer. Um, I'll probably just see if my truck or something can fit down in here and uh, then make some, put that Porsche over here where my truck is. Um, for now <laughs> so fun times at least it quit raining but it's uh, all wet under under there I hate getting under this big thing I hate getting under really big vehicles like this just kind of can suck <laughs> I got my AC Delco jack stands under there I'm sure it's fine but still it's just you know the less you get under something this big the better off you are anyway get the oil change finished up on this guy and uh, be ready for him to get this paramotor out of here and they'll give me a little more room in the garage all right I got the uh, oil change in that guy I spilled a little oil there I'm gonna have to clean that up I used that one dollar uh, uh, like they're like about a gallon of degreaser just pour that on there you get it at Dollar Tree and then hose it off but got my uh, got my truck moved back there got this trailer hooked up so we're ready to load the paramotor and everything when he's done with church and then I gotta go look at a van with a uh, coolant hose that in the back that uh, came apart um, they had it towed back to their house so yeah had a flat tire and it took out the coolant hose going to that rear heater so fun times there but this this girl's about ready to come out probably have to move a few things to fit her out but oh well well all I have left now is this uh, Porsche 
which it looks like from the tracking information, the fan should be here tomorrow for that guy. So I'm hoping maybe I can get that out of here tomorrow night. Then we're ready for more cars. Um, but it looks like the uh, heat wave is finally over. I'll show you the garden here uh, <laughs> real quick. <laughs> some things have gone great, some things not so much. It's uh, It's been quite the year for gardening. So, here's some of the good stuff. I've got onions, they're bulbing out. I've got tobacco plants that are very happy and growing. I've got squash, in fact, I've got several that need to get picked here. But I got yellow squash like crazy. I've got banana peppers growing like crazy. You can see down in here, they're all happy. I have one banana pepper plant die. Um, I haven't pulled it out yet, but it's pretty much dead. Potatoes are dying back. They're going to be ready to harvest very soon. Uh, the peas did well. We have plenty of peas. Um, but I got a groundhog problem. And he's been in here trashing some plants. So most of the beans here, the pole beans were killed. Uh, my, I, I'll still have a few beans out of this, but not many. Um, it just kind of just sucks. Uh, the cucumbers died. There's one that's still trying to be alive there. We'll see. But they're pretty much all dead. Um, tomato plants have been dying like crazy. I don't know why. But I'll be lucky to have any tomatoes by the time this is done. They just suddenly started dying. Um, there's nothing wrong with the stalks on them. Um, but the raccoon, or, or whatever, the uh, groundhog, has been... Uh, out here stealing them so I'm gonna get rid of that groundhog very shortly um, for sure and he pretty much ate all the beans looks like I got one bean there so yeah I just been so busy I haven't had a chance to really get out here and deal with this groundhog he's living under the shed back there but uh, I'll get rid of him but I'll have some tomatoes I think um, some of them are just dead. It's just how it goes. I got more, more summer squash to get picked too. Um, I've had plenty of winter squash. Um, spaghetti squash has been plentiful. I've got butternut squash. I've got a pumpkin growing here. Um, right there's the pumpkin, and over here is like a butternut, I think over here and then I've got more spaghetti squash we just harvested several there's another spaghetti squash growing so they've been doing well so some of the stuff just does really well and some doesn't <laughs> just how it is I guess but uh, anyway that's how the garden's doing and uh, getting ready for the next round of cars and stuff to work on and get fixed all right I'll talk to y'all later this is Tom the frugal prepper